she is considered to be one of the stronger yokais in Gensokyo. With her ability to manipulate the boundary, others have referred to her as simply the gap yokai. Some may think of her as a slacker considering how long she tends to sleep, and those truly foolish think of her as an old hag but you didn't hear that from me. I will refer to said being as Yukari Yakumo. Hello, Magic here and welcome back to another episode of Character Profile, the series where we take an in-depth look of a character from games, print work, fan related stuff, and anything that could be attributed to the gap yokai known as Yukari. So without further ado, let's begin the character profile, Yukari Yakumo. Name and their meaning. Well, this is going to be another lengthy one, oh boy. Her full name is Yukari Yakumo. The characters for Yakumo literally means 8 clouds, but can also mean countless clouds. And Yukari means purple or violet. In ordinary Japanese perspective, these two colors are not discriminated. Chapter 26 of Curiosity of Lotus Asia reveals that Yukari gave herself that name, in which she didn't have that name 1200 years ago. Probably a coincidence, there is a train service in Japan called Yakumo, but with a different spelling as shown. All of the Yakumo family are named after colors. The light frequencies or energies of the colors are proportional to their powers. Chen is orange, which is weaker than Ran, which is indigo, and Yukari is strongest as she is violet. The energy of violet light is the highest in the visible spectrum, and violet light is the boundary between visible and invisible light. Red light, the symbolic color of Romelia or Reimu, is another boundary, but they are stronger than Chen. Fittingly, when Reimu and Yukari team up in Imperishable Night, they're called the Boundary Team. In addition to maintaining the Great Hakurei Barrier, the colors form the two boundaries between visible and invisible light. In addition, the word Yukari is uncommonly used to mean border or edge, a bit with a different character. Occasionally, double rainbows form after rainfall. There is the rainbow one usually sees, red on the top and violet at the bottom, and another larger, fainter one above it. The colors on the second rainbow are reversed, red on the bottom and violet at the top. In other words, the outside edges of the rainbow are violet or, put it another way, violet forms the boundary between the sky and the rainbow. Thus, Yukari's given name strongly signifies the idea of boundaries. So, double rainbow anyone? In Japan and many other countries, purple or violet have been thought as a noble color and used occasionally as a color for high ranks. In fact, Zun mentioned in some of his interviews that he was aware of this fact and uses the color on certain character designs to show levels of power and nobility. Thus, in this sense, using both Violet as her name and in dress shows that Yukari was designed to be powerful and high-ranking. Well, Zun wasn't slacking off when it came to her name. There is an assumption that her name, Yakumo, is taken from the writer, Lafcadio Hearn, who naturalized as a Japanese citizen and renamed to Koizumi Yakumo. When fans asked about the implied connection between Yukari and Maribel Hearn in a high school open lecture program, Zoom brought up Lafcadio Hearn but did not elaborate. Thanks for the somewhat information, I guess. Yukari also comes from the first ancient poem written in what would become the Japanese tanka form. I'm just gonna post a poem on the screen and use Google Translate to say it, because there's no way in the hell I'm going to bloody try that shit when I can barely say the cast name correctly. Yakumo Tatsu, Izumo Yagegaki, Tsumagomi ni Yaegaki Tsukuro, Sono Yaegaki o. Definitely in keeping with the character's origin slash age in this storyline, the translation into English is Eight fold rising clouds build an eight fold fence, an eight fold Izumo fence. We're in to keep my bride. Oh, splendid eight fold fence. The poem was attributed to the god Susano. Interpretations vary as to the meaning of the poem. 
I interpret as people had a love for the number 8. Yukari's name is thoroughly analyzed in chapter 26 of Curiosity by Rinosuke. However, Rinosuke implies at the end that there may even be more meanings hidden in it. At least you tried, man. Character Appearance Her first appearance was in Perfect Cherry Blossom where she is depicted with purple eyes and long blonde hair. She carries a pink lace parasol and a paper fan and rides on a red gap that leads to an unknown destination. She wears a deep purple dress, a pale pink mob cap with a thin red ribbon and smaller ribbons tied liberally on her accessories and the tips of her hair. In her appearance in Immaterial and Scarlet Weather, her eyes have become dark golden. She wears a purple Chinese style tabard with various trigrams over a pale pink western style dress similar to Rand's outfit, wears her hair coiled up into her mob cap and usually carries a pink parasol. She wears the same outfit in Imperishable Night, but her hair is left loose. In the Japanese community, this outfit is known as the Taoist dress. Ah, glad to know it had a name. I always thought of it as her long sleeve dress. According to Zune, the purple dress in PCB is her casual day wear and the pink one with the Ba Gua symbol in Imperishable is the work attire she wears when she commands her Shikigami. Let's talk about the hexagram that's on her Taoist dress. The outfit Yukari wears in post PCB games has two groups of solid slash broken lines called trigrams on the front. A solid line represents yang and a broken line is ying. The top trigram is dai or tui which means open and is associated with west and water. The bottom trigram is kun, field and is associated with southwest and earth as well as yoni, divine passage. The two trigrams together in that order form the hexagram for clustering, gathering together and finish which sounds more fitting for Suiga. The hexagram Sui formed by the combination of Tui and Kun results in a meaning of gathering together to preserve towards a destination. This hexagram signifies also great wisdom which is necessary for leadership when directing an assembly together to create overall prosperity for everyone. Yukari herself can be seen as an overseer of Gensokyo her ability to create boundaries would definitely give her the ability to bring everyone together while maintaining the harmony of the created world. Maybe this design was a critique on her ability. That's one hell of an explanation for her goddamn dress! Appearance in games and print work Let's look where her appearances have been throughout the series. Her first appearance was in PCB. A few days later, Yujiko asked the heroine for a favor, so Reimu, Sakya, or Marissa. The magic boundary between Gensokyo and the Netherworld was weakened by Yukari, one of Yujiko's friends, to make stealing Gensokyo's spring easier. Yujiko asked the heroine to find her friend, who would be preparing for the Flower View event during this time, and remind her to repair the boundary. Her next appearance, which was the first time she was playable, would be an imperishable where she teams up with Reimu in solving the incident with the fake moon. Her next appearance is in Material. Even though it's 7.5, the game was released after Imperishable, so that's the reason we're talking about it next. She goes about meeting with everyone, fighting them, and taking some alcohol from them. She later meets the antagonist of the game. She was in Shoot the Bullet, Extra Stage 3 and 4 boss because Aya wants to take some pictures. She was playable once more in Scarlet Weather. Her main goal at the time was finding Tenshi and punishing her. She's in Subterranean where she assists Reimu by allowing Reimu's shot to have some sort of attribute similar to her, like the ability to go beyond the screen boundary. Fancy. She's playable in Hiso Tensoko but without a story mode like majority of the girls. She's in Hopeless Masquerade but only as a background character. She's on top of the Hawkeray Shrine waving her fan. She's an impossible spell card as the 10th day boss. She tries to stop Seija after reading the newspaper from the Tengu. Her last current appearance when it comes to the game is Legacy but only in an ending. Now let's look at the print works. She's popped in quite a bit when it comes to the printed works. Yukari was in Curiosity as a secondary character. She was in Bohemian where Aya interviewed her. 
also an extra of the wind as a cameo. She's in Seasonal Dream Vision, which was a semi-official Toho fan book. The part Yukari was in was a story written by Zune called A Beautiful Flower Blooming Violet Every 60 Years as the main character. She's in the Sengetsu Sei series, aka the ones with the three fairies of light as a secondary character. She's in Perfect for Meto as a secondary character and has an article as well. She's a secondary character in Silent Sinner. In the grimoire of Marissa, said author made a section for Yukari. She's in Cage in Lunatic as a secondary character. She's appeared in Wilds and Horde Hermit as a secondary character. She's in Forbidden Scrollery with cameos in Chapter 1, 4, 10, 43, and 48. She's in Strange Creators for Outer World Volume 2 in the Profile section, Cross Review section. Personality Let's see how Yukari is like in person. Yukari is known for being a very yokai-like yokai who sleeps all day and lives for the enjoyment of life. Damn, I ain't going to lie, I'm pretty jealous right there. Though she rarely leaves her home, she's well connected and is acquainted with many of the most powerful yokai as well as anyone having anything to do with the Great Hakurei Barrier or the outside world, although she rarely attacks humans. She has a tendency to toy with her opponents rather than use her full power from the start. If anyone is suited for the role of mastermind, it's Yukari. She excels at mathematics and is experienced due to her long life. Very long life, mind you. She possesses superhuman intellect and especially surpasses in dealing with numbers. In Bohemian, as Rand said, this intellect is something that even Rand is not able to understand. To the extent that for example, that she's able to determine the depths of the darkness of Avisi or determine in an instant how long it would take for the Ursa Major to devour the North Star as it seems. Concretely, to what extent this amazing intellect goes is hard to know, but it would be no mistake to think that this intellect far surpasses that of humans. I wonder how a conversation between Yukari and Stephen Hawking would go. She often has a great deal of insight and understanding about whatever happens in Ginsokyo, and possesses a considerably intellectual proudness as well. Though she seems flaky and unreliable most of the time, when the safety or security of Ginsokyo is at stake, she won't hesitate to get involved, even if it means using others to do the work for her. Because having your home being destroyed is never a fun thing. For example, in Scarlet Weather, she treats Tenshi with much hostility after finding out the plot of the heavens. She could easily be either a villain or a heroine depending on her whims, so try to get on her good side. Yukari deals with her problems by manipulating others to act to resolve things for her. She seems to rarely act directly except in particularly dire situations. In all cases, she rarely lets anyone know what her true aims or goals are and sometimes these goals are extremely abstract. Yukari has a well-deserved reputation of being fickle, whimsical, and lying often, and thus many characters in Gensokyo dislike her. For whatever reason, Yukari takes it all in stride and does not seriously deny any of those comments. Fuck them haters, right? She seems to actively try to keep her more obviously altruistic actions a secret such as her donations to the Hakurei Shrine in Strange and Bright Nature Deity, Chapter 23, Page 6. She possibly cultivates this image to ensure the people continue to fear her as a yokai, as this is what her true goal for a particularly complex gambit is revealed to be at the end of Cajun Lunatic Runegate. You know what? Let's talk about that complex gambit as it's one crazy ass plan. Most of this part will be for Interesting Total Facts Episode 10, as that's where I first discussed it, but anyway, let's continue. Now in Silent Sinner, Reimu, Marissa, Sokia, and Romelia are going to the moon because Yukari told Romelia about her plans to invade the moon. And they do so and face the ever-loving, broken-ass shit that is Yorihime. While the girls are distracting her, Yukari and Ran are also on the moon to invade as well, but are intercepted by Toyohime. And the girls lost, as expected from two OP girls. But anyway, it's later revealed that the whole goal of this was to steal some intense ancient Lunarian treasure from them. 
both Yukari and Raymond's group were the distraction while Yuyuko and Yomo were to steal it. Though Yuyuko kind of went troll mode and took some sake instead, which Yukari thought was actually better than some treasure. The reason Yuyuko and Yomu were able to do so because ghosts don't have any impurities like the folks from Earth do. Now this is explained in Silent Center, but if you read Cajun Lunatic, it's explained even further of the real purpose of the invasion. I'll read you the part that you need to know. This part I'm reading takes place during the little party at the Skull and Devil Mansion and Kaguya and Eren were invited. Eren took a drink. There was no doubt about it. Whatever labor they went through to get this sake, it was no ordinary venture. This was not some cheap swill that businessmen would drink after hours, incomprehensible babble spilling from their mouths. It was an exceedingly ancient sake that had been aging for over a thousand years in the lunar capital. Yes, it was likely sleeping even at the time when Aaron fled for Earth. What? What is this? Aaron was clearly shaken. She had shown composure without intending, meaning it was the moment that Yukari had been waiting for her to strike. Eric could never forget the taste of that sake, the purity that was impossible to obtain on the impure earth, and the deep flavor that came from its millennium long slumber. It must have been centuries since you left your hometown, I thought you would be coming distraught with homesickness, so I had some sake from the lunar capital prepared for you. Yukari grinned. The ominous smile left a deep scar in her mind, something she would never be able to forget. To make those who could not die question the meaning of life, to make them fear the unknown, what they cannot understand. That was the true intention behind Yukari's second lunar invasion. Simply put, if you can outsmart an immortal genius like Eren and fucking scare them, you're probably doing something right. Occupation slash jobs. She doesn't exactly have an occupation as majority of the time, she's sleeping. At most, she's like the bodyguard of Kinsokyo when things are really going to shit, like the fake moon in Imperishable and Tenshi in Scarlet Weather. General information slash backstory. Generally, this section was never too long. Well, with Yukari, things are never as simple, and this section is a good example of it. According to Perfect Memento in strict sense, an apparent article on Yukari appears in the first edition of the Gensokyo Chronicle from 1200 years ago. However, this article did not refer to her name as Yukari Yakumo. It is believed she chose this name for herself. The name Yukari signifying that she was a yokai of boundaries and the name Yakumo from a poem about creating a great fenced mansion where one can live a peaceful life in seclusion and a strong fortress to keep the gods trapped inside. This land would be Gensokyo. Another backstory you should know is the Saigyo Ayakashi occurrence. Over a thousand years ago, Yukari met and became friends with a human girl named Yuiko Saigyoji. Over time, Yuiko was driven to suicide out of despair over her ability to control death. After Yuiko died, her body was used to seal the Sagyo Ayakashi, a yokai tree which drained the lives of too many humans by an unknown individual who hoped Yuriko would never have to suffer and experience pain again. The seal was created as the boundary between life and death. Yukari continued to be friends with Yuriko's ghost, although Yuriko gradually forgot who she had been and why she had died. It is not stated who sealed the Sagyo Ayakashi. It was someone who held Yuiko very dear. Judging by the record, my wish is that she will never again reincarnate and never again suffer pain. Yuiko's profile describes the hypothetical breaking of the seal as breaching the boundary. The boundary sealing the Saigyo Ayakashi is apparently the boundary between life and death, as this is what the background music that plays during the Saigyo Ayakashi reflowerings represents. Boundary of life and death is one of Yukari's spell cards. This possibly implies that it was Yukari who sealed the Saigyo Ayakashi. Yukari's profile reveals she knew all along that Yuyuko's body was sealing it and gives a clear motive as the tree was killing too many humans. As another possible indication, the grimoire of Marissa brings up the butterfly dream regarding Yuyuko's spell card during the Saigyo Ayakashi's reflowering which is a theme associated with Yukari. 
One day, Yuyuko requested that Yukari uses her power to repair the border between the Netherworld and Gensokyo. Yukari slightly set off to do so. She had known Yuyuko's plan to make the Sagio Ayakashi bloom could never succeed, but was too busy sleeping to say or to do anything about it, or to put the border back to normal after everything was finished, which put her on a collision course with the heroines of PCB. Yeah, the two have quite the history with one another, and Yukari is still a slacker. Let's go over the Lunar War backstory because you just heard about the second invasion. Over a thousand years ago, the yokai now named Yukari Yakumo organized an army of yokai and led them in an invasion of the moon, of which Yuyuko was also present for. Publicly, Yukari states that the invasion was to take the Lunarian source of power, an infinite energy source which lets them play all day. However, the yokais were subsequently routed by the Lunarians, who possessed superior technology and magic, and forced to retreat to Earth. While Yukari claims she organized the invasion out of a desire for that power, her true purpose may be that she did it to teach the yokai a lesson about starting wars of conquest, namely that it was a bad idea, as since that time, no yokais have attempted to expand their territory beyond Gensokyo. Well, she got them. An important one would have to be the border of Gensokyo. Since then, Yukari has had numerous roles in managing Gensokyo and the yokai. She authored a system of constellations for the yokai. She enacted the yokai expansion project 500 years ago by creating a border between illusion and reality around Gensokyo. She was one of several yokai who suggested the creation of the Great Hawkeye Barrier 120 years ago and presumably was one of the several that contributed to its creation. The Gensokyo record in PCB's prologue says that the original Gensokyo boundary, presumably the first boundary between inside and outside mentioned in Yukari's Perfect Memento in Strict Sense article, was created by priests but Zun said in his emails that the Kitsokyo record is not reliable and that only the long-lived yokai knows the true history of Gensokyo. Akyu firmly believes that Yukari was involved and Curiosity Chapter 26 Prologue states that Yukari being its actual creator is an ongoing rumor. According to Rinosuke, Yukari's power is what separates Gensokyo from the outside world. The next one you might not be too wary but it's referred to as the Vampire Incident. Regarding the Vampire Incident in Perfect Memento, it is not stated who the powerful yokai that defeated the vampire, who signed the contract with the vampire, or who was the one who wrote the original draft of the spell card rules that came afterwards, as it was also written on yokai contract paper. Akyu feels it was in the Shrine Maiden. However, the Kali phone at the end reveals that Yukari is the author of a work called Vampire Pact. This possibly implies her involvement in at least one of these things, if not all three, in the fact that Yukari may have been involved in the deal with the devil, Romelia Scarlet. At the very least, strange creators of Outer Worlds state that she was apparently involved in the creation of the spell card rules. On the related note to the contract, it's explicitly stated in her PCB profile that she's the one responsible for outsiders ending up in Gensokyo, where most of them get devoured by yokai. That's not pleasant, especially for those who's being eaten. Her involvement is made even more explicit in Chapter 14 of Wald, where Yukari reveals to Keizen that having the Zashiki Warashi sent to the outside world takes precedent above keeping them in Gensokyo, and then cryptically comments, Gensokyo is getting the food to fill the stomachs of all of his yokais from somewhere. This could further extend to an article and symposium where there were human's bones near a wall, but no humans of Gensokyo was missing, and Yukari made no reference to the outside world of humans, calling it a misunderstanding. The bones later on disappeared. Another thing to note would be the underground agreement. She made a deal with certain yokais to allow them to have their own realm underground in form of hell if they pacified the evil spirits there. For a while, Yukari took it upon herself to make regular checkups on various aspects of Gensokyo, such as the human village or the barrier, but eventually took on Ran as a Shikigami and left such tasks to her. When you have an assistant of sorts, might as well use her. Titles Yukari's got a few titles there, nothing too insane, surprisingly. She has Mastermind Behind the Spiriting Away, 
border of phantasm, yokai that looks in the boundary, yokai of boundaries, uncanny smile, phantasmal wedding of the kitsune, sun shower of fantasy, yokai of coming in and out suddenly, and gatekeeper of Kinsokyo. How appropriate. Ability slash powers. Yukari is with no doubt one of the most powerful yokai in Kinsokyo. A few other yokai like Suika and Yugi have been considered to be around her level. Yukari also refers to Toihimi as being stronger than she is and tries to avoid direct confrontation with her. Not a bad idea to be honest. Despite her power, she might still lose spell card battles to humans or yokai. Her physical strength is what you expect from a yokai. While the extent of an average yokai's strength is never really specified, their bodily ability is typically very high, so her strength is still far from that of a human. There are some examples in statement which shows Yukari's physical prowess. In Curiosity Chapter 12, Yukari's hand is able to effortlessly block and brush aside a mallet swung by Rinosuke with all his might, leaving him shocked that a small slender feminine hand was able to pull off such a feat. Rinosuke said that it feels like he hit a pillow. Mei Ling in one of her Hiso Tensoko wind quotes notes that she felt an odd resistance from Yukari's body, presumably after punching and kicking her a lot, to the point where she wondered if Yukari was wearing something else under her presumably delicate dress of her. Obviously, she has adamantium bones, duh. Yukari states in her own wind quotes in Immaterial that she has no weaknesses, and even shooting, cutting, stabbing, hitting, or killing her is useless. She. If killing doesn't work, then what are you? The fifth immortal? In Perfect Memento, her ability is yet again described as being without weakness and as one of the most dangerous that yokai are known to possess. Her Imperishable Knight profile also states that she easily has enough power to annihilate all of Gensokyo if she desires. While the manual says that the danger and power of her ability is beyond imagination. Yeah, because destroying the world you help create is always a smart thing. By mostly moving around in gaps, one would usually not see her as doing much physical labor at all. And according to Scarlet Weather, since she ends up blurting out herself such saying things like to do mountain climbing at such an age, there is the image that she is like an indoor type yokai, but in the end, she is still a yokai. Yukari has the ability to, as you would expect, manipulate boundaries. With the word boundary in its name, Yukari is capable of pretty much anything put under the influence of this ability. In her monologue during A Beautiful Flower Blooming Violet Every 60 Years, she explains that this power allows her to control the boundaries between any and all things, like in Sokyo and the outside world, the worlds of the living and the dead, humans and yokai, and even the day and the night. The most common application of Yukari's boundary manipulation ability is opening gaps, or called Tsukima, which acts as a portal between two places, where she's able to hold, sit on, or emerge from such gaps. By manipulating the boundaries in space and creating a chasm, she's able to link together separate places. According to this, she's able to show up in unexpected places from time to time, but the aforementioned suspiciousness has been refined. Although this gap is kind of a subspace within Yukari's gap, one can see a lot of eyes. These eyes are a manifestation of what one could say is the image of how desires are swirling around that Yukari sees in the outside world. The description of Yukari's magic eye, Laplet's demon spell card, implies that Yukari can see using the eyes as well. Also, although signposts and other float sam also drift about, these things also come from Yukari's image of things that have come to be of no use in the outside world. Other than that, since there is a boundary on the water surface so to speak, as there is definitely a distinction between water and atmosphere, and since there is a boundary called the horizon that separates the sky from the earth, as was said, she could freely manipulate the boundaries of all existent things at will. According to Perfect Momentum, 
It seems that not only our physical boundaries, but also the general idea of boundaries are also able to be manipulated and it seems like she would be able to manipulate the boundary between dreams and reality and open up holes for people to enter into dreams. Yukari is also capable of seeing and seeing through boundaries that are normally invisible. When the human village was displaced from history by Kane, Yukari was still able to see it. It's shown that Yukari can also control the boundaries and bend them to her will as seen in Immaterial when she adjusted the sky by manipulating the border between daylight and moonlight to unite the day and the night. According to Marissa, Yukari can even control the boundary between a Demako for play and a Demako for battle. That can't be a fun thing to experience. There are limits to the kinds of places Yukari can connect with her gaps. She required many trips to reach heaven in Scarlet Weather, while in Silent Sinner, she could only create a gap to the moon under highly specific circumstances and had to travel much of the distance to the lunar capital on foot. She is, however, capable of traveling between Gensokyo and the outside world. Yukari can create gaps through which only she can pass or through which anything can pass. Ultimately, since existence of anything consists of having a boundary, for anything to lose its boundary is a very big thing, as it would then not be able to have its own individual existence. As the rules that govern boundaries would govern this, it is said that to make a new boundary is to create a new existence, and to destroy a boundary is to negate an existence. Whoa, this is getting into some heavy shit. Aku evaluated this ability saying there is not any sort of defense method nor countermeasure, a power comparable to the powers of the gods. However, Yukari is capable of sensing and repairing damage to the Great Hawkery Barrier and is widely believed to have aided in its construction. Yuyuko states that Yukari could have not done so herself. To add to all this, Aku writes that manipulation of boundaries is theoretically a godlike power which would allow Yukari to create or destroy anything, but that all the stories about it are impossible to confirm. Let's look at some of the examples of this ability. Manipulation of the boundary between lies and truth of the moon reflected on the lake surface for an invasion of the surface of the moon from Kitsokyo, referring to the lunar war in Silent Sinner. By the boundary between reality and fantasy, she isolated Kitsokyo from the outside world, participating in the Great Hawkeray Barrier Project, this is referring to the Great Barrier Disturbance. Upon Yuko's request, repairing the border between the present world and the netherworld. Example, the boundary between life and death that has become thin, which was in PCB. Since the Great Hawkeray Barrier was loosened, she returned Rinosuke to Gensoku, who had been ejected into the outside world, which had occurred in Curiosity. Many of her spell cards allude to various circumstances involving boundary manipulation, such as barrier, balance of motion and stillness, barrier, mesh of light and darkness, boundary between humans and yokai, and many others. Another skill set she has, as if she wasn't broken enough, is Omyodo. Yukari is skilled in Omyodo, the Taoism derived arts of traditional Japanese court wizards and specializes in spells which create and manipulate barriers, presumably due to overlap with her innate abilities. Yukari has been able to teach some of her spells to Reimu, whose own techniques have similar roots. Yukari also displays great aptitude with Shikigami, binding a powerful Kitsune and numerous lesser servants at once. As Shikigami are strongest when following orders, Yukari must also be skilled at giving the correct orders to fully maximize her Shikigami's potential. In an interview with Aya, Rand states that despite sleeping most of the time, Yukari is capable of giving orders no one else will think up the instant she opens her mouth. And Yukari uses complex equations to increase Ran's power indefinitely. This manner of using Shikigami is likely one of the reasons Yukari views computers and Shikigami as one and the same. Yeah, Yukari is no slouch when it comes to powers and abilities, probably one of the most insane I've dealt with yet. Music Let's talk about Yukari's music theme. She hasn't had much but it's still important to talk about. Throughout the series, she's had three tracks, one stage theme and two boss theme. Her phantasm stage theme was Yokai Domination, Who Done It? It's not that different from the original song, Yokai Domination, which was Ran's stage theme.
Her boss theme in PCB was Necrophantasia. Her next theme was from Immaterial and it was called Night's Fall, Evening Star. Nightfall also got a remix in Scarlet Weather. Gameplay In the main shoot 'em up series, she's only had one real playable appearance. In Imperishable, where she was Reimu's partner, if you go Focus Stance, you'll start using Yukari. Her shot is called Operation Needle. She's able to summon Ran and she'll start homing in on opponents, keeping with the homing feature like Reimu's. Her spell card is Border Sign, Quadruple Barrier. Her last spell is Boundary, Quadruple Barrier of the Imperishable Knight. Last spells are activated as soon as you're hit. So you activate this last spell if Reimu got hit. If you got hit as Yukari, you activate Reimu's last spell, Divine Spirit. Fantasy Seal Blink. She's sorta in Subterranean as Reimu has to choose between three partners. Yukari is the forward focus type. Choosing her, you got the rolling option. Yukari's shots are called Purple Needles of Painful Reproach. And they're violet needles that shoot upwards. Her spirit attack is the opposite of a lack of common sense. It makes you immune and nothing can kill you. It has a small duration so use it wisely. But all points except for grace points are temporarily lost. Your support skill, the unique feature you get with your partner, allows your option shots to warp around to the opposite side of the screen, which is cool. The best part is that you're able to teleport from one side of the screen to the other. Just press the arrow key twice at the edge of the screen without firing and voila, you're on the opposite side now. Let's see how Yukari has functioned in the fighters. Yukari is a well-balanced character with spell cards that produce a momentum-based offensive that can wear down opponents, excellent ground-to-air options, and solid defense counters provide frequent opportunities to break opponent pressure or prevent it from starting. Also, Yukari has great pushing power with her dense projectiles and is able to put her opponent in the corner with ease. However, her pressure game leaves a lot to be desired. Her large hitbox also leaves her at a disadvantage at times. Playing Yukari requires bullet zoning skills and the ability to convert a variety of opportunities into damage. Some of her pros are good bullets, possesses highly damaging combos, useful grazing move with large hitbox, normals have good range, able to push opponents to corners easily. Some of her cons however are has a large hurt box even when crouching, few tight pressure options, below average mobility, slowest neutral wake ups in the game, third slowest rolls. Notable things about Yukari is, Yukari's ground dash hovers slightly above the ground. This allows her to dash over some low physical attacks. However, Yukari's hitbox is turned horizontal during the dash which makes her extra vulnerable to wide physical attacks. Yukari is able to press 44 or D4 with her back against the corner to teleport to the other side of the screen. The teleport has a lengthy startup with significant recovery when landing on the other side. When knocked down, Yukari will fade into the ground before reappearing at the selected wake up location, making Okizumi, a pressuring an opponent while they are getting up after being knocked down, against her more difficult. Relationships Let's discuss Yukari's relationship with the cast. Using her gap to travel across Gensokyo, despite sleeping a lot, Yukari has encountered many yokai and humans in the Toho project. By many residents of Gensokyo, she is commonly referred to as the gap yokai when she's involved in a conversation. Let's start off with the two main protagonists, Reimu and Marissa. Yukari has always had a close tie to the Hakari Shrine Maidens. As one meaning of her name is she controls the Shrine Maidens of Gensokyo. Reimu Hakure along with Marissa Kurisame first met Yukari when she asked her to repair the border between the Netherworld 
and Gensokyo in PCB. However, Yukari indicated that she is already familiar with Reimu and Marissa to an unspecified extent. With Marissa, it resulted in Yukari playing a prank on her by keeping her up way past bedtime. As a friend, she often visits Reimu at the Hawkery Shrine and often drops by Marissa's house randomly, to which in perfect memento, Marissa complains that Yukari never uses the door. To be fair, when you have Yukari's power, you would probably say, fuck the doors. Yukari steals food from Reimu in Perfect Memento, stays at Reimu's shrine for at least a month into the winter in Curiosity, and is among several characters when Reimu complains about yokai visitors to her shrine in Wild. She sometimes visits to discuss philosophical matters like in Seasonal Dream Vision or Strange and Bright Nature Deity, where she gave Reimu out of season taro roots from the outside world, asking her to think about their meaning. As an employer, she's given Reimu several missions in Subterranean, Imperishable, and Silent Sinner. An offhand comment in the first stage of Imperishable shows she's compensated Reimu for it, at least you're getting paid for it. As a mentor, she is often teaching Reimu not just about Kinsokyo, she does that a lot too, shown several times in Oriental, but also how to do her job as a shrine maiden. She shows up when Reimu purposefully damages the barrier in Curiosity to tell her not to do that, reminds Reimu of her yokai crushing duties in Imperishable Extra, and makes Reimu train her to prepare for Silent Sinner. Curiosity states that the latter is rare for her. The latter included Yukari attacking Reimu at unannounced times. Be ready for them surprise attacks! She seems to be secretly looking after Reimu in other ways as she sneaks yen donations into the Hakari Shrine's donation offering box when Reimu isn't looking in chapter 23 of Strange. The only donations you're getting, girl. Like most characters, Reimu finds Yukari extremely annoying. Yukari doesn't mind, clearly joking, how rude, or what a greeting. To such things, in the case of Seasonal Dream Vision, for Marissa, she got angry over Yukari's random visits, but it was because Yukari was curious as to Marissa's thoughts on a matter regarding the flower incident. So presumably, many of Yukari's other visits to Marissa are for her own amusement as well. That doesn't surprise me at all. Let's look at Yukari's relationship when it comes to her Shikigami. Ran Yakumo is Yukari's main Shikigami. Yukari is the one who's given Ran her current name. An interview in Bohemian with Aya implies Ran came to be Yukari's Shikigami because of all the power it promised and is quite satisfied with the results despite losing her freedom. Ran was not born before the Genso Lunar War, so she must have become Yukari Shikigami sometime after that. Yukari keeps the relationship on a user to Shikigami level. This relationship is analogous to a user and its computer in the outside world, and Yukari insists heavily that Ran is not a fox, but is a tool to be used. Fox lover will say otherwise. Yukari's own thought and perspective in Chapter 5 of Cajun Lunatic refers to Ran with computer terms such as programming or debugging. Ran is still more advanced than a computer, so Yukari attempts philosophical discussions with Ran from time to time, but typically gets boring responses involving numbers and calculations. Yukari loves Ran very much, but in terms of how one would love their own tools. Fair enough, and I do love my computer in the object sense. Ran often quote unquote forgets she is a Shikigami, taking matters into her own hand without Yukari's orders. This can't be helped because Yukari sleeps a lot. Yukari will physically discipline Ran when this happens by whacking her with her umbrella. That's one way to discipline someone. No one I would recommend though. Using a tool and keeping it in good shape via discipline shows love for your Shikigami. According to Yukari, Ran accepts and seems satisfied with this and also seems to care for her master, attempting to encourage Yukari after the second Genso Luna War failed, but she won't disagree that her master is annoying and is often driven to much frustration by Yukari's double speak and secrecy. Given it's Yukari, I don't blame you for being annoyed one bit. Another of the Shikigami is Chen. Ran also has a Shikigami named Chen. As Ran's Shikigami, Chen follows the will of both Ran and Yukari. It is implied she's quite a handful, unlike Ran. Yukari views Chen as both Ran's Shikigami and their pet, saying in Subterranean, I wonder where the cat went off to. It's such a pain when she suddenly disappears like that. 
I wish you'd take care to program your own familia properly without any bugs. Easier said than done, I can imagine. Unlike Ran, Chen is never called Chen Yakumo, even when Chen and Ran Yakumo show up in the same sentence in Perfect Memento. I'm actually curious why Chen doesn't have Yakumo for her last name. These Shikigamis are the ones you may not have known. They are her crow familiars. Zenki and Goki are two crows that Yukari and Ran use as Shikigami. They might be temporary names for all Shikigami crows, as one gets killed by Toyohime, yet three more spy for Yukari later in Chapter 20 of Silent Sinner. With the Shikigamis talked about, let's look at the residents from the netherworld. We just had a long ass part dedicated to this person, so it's only fair we talked about her. Yukari and Yuyuko Sagyoji were friends even while Yuyuko was alive more than a thousand years ago and continued to be Yuyuko's friend after she became a ghost. Of note is that this friendship between Yukari and Yuyuko does not extend to Yukari Shikigami, Ran, and Yuyuko does not mind others beating Ran up. Ouch! Sorry Ran. Yuyuko seems to be the only one who truly understands Yukari. Yukari knows this as well, often just assuming that Yuyuko knows what she's talking about or what's going on. This is clear whenever the two interact, including victory quotes. The two don't think exactly alike, however, which results in Yuyuko acting in ways that surprise Yukari. Yukari will do something just because Yuyuko asks and vice versa. What bros? Yukari believed that the Saigyo Ayakashi ate too many human lives. She was also aware that Yuyuko's body was sealing it. It's possible Yukari is the one who sealed it using Yuyuko's body herself. Another resident to discuss would be Yomu Kumpaku. Being Yuyuko's servant, Yukari helps Yomu with lessons and advice every once in a while, like in Scarlet Weather. When it comes to relationships, let's look at the Onis. Yukari was Suika's friend before the Oni went underground. It is unknown how or when they became friends. Yukari looks out for Suika in Immaterial and Suika does favors for Yukari, such as rebuilding the Hawkeri Shrine in Scarlet Weather or helping to investigate the underground. The two played Damaku battles with each other, though it's been a while since the last one before Scarlet Weather. In Oriental Chapter 12, Yukari is with Suika at the Hawkeri Shrine New Year's Festival. Suika does get annoyed with Yukari's dirty tricks, but doesn't go beyond snapping that they're dirty. Suika may know some of Yukari's secret, as she's referred to Yukari's existence as fraudulent and immaterial and stated to Yukari that it was rare to see her on this side of the world in broad daylight. Another Oni would have to be Yugi. Yugi is one of the Oni, presumably Suika is another, that Yukari made a deal with. In exchange for keeping the evil spirits of former hell in control, Yukari would give them their own place in the underworld and keep the overworld yokai from intruding. Unlike Suika, Yukari does not seem to have any personal attachments to Yugi. As an aside, from Yukari's immaterial ending, Yukari believes that if the Onis ever do come back to Gitsokyo, it must be gradual instead of all Onis coming back at once. That would be the best for everyone's sake. Another important person would have to be the Cough Cough Hermit Kazen. It is unknown how long Yukari and Kazen have known each other, but both are Yokai Sages. The monologue in Perfect Memento states it was the Yokai Sages who proposed the Hakurei Barrier. So Yukari and Kazen probably knew each other since at least that time. After Kazen came down from the mountain in the present day, Yukari assumed Kazen was always on her side and that Kazen's actions were intended to help Yukari's ideals. Kazen finally got fed up by the time of Wild Chapter 35 and angrily informed Yukari that she wasn't on her side. The outburst actually caused Yukari a brief visible moment of distress before Yukari regained her composure, but Yukari stated she would wait as long as it takes for Kaze to come to her side. Not gonna lie, I'm curious to see how their relationship continues on in Wald. With the Hermit talked about, let's look at the resident of the Scarlet Devil Mansion. Yukari uses Romelia Scarlet as part of her scheme to extract the resident's tax and get revenge on the Lunarians in Silent Sinner. Patchouli reveals Romelia knew she was manipulated but didn't care because she was bored. Romelia herself has an unexplained rivalry of sorts with Yukari, wanting to get to the moon in her own way before Yukari could to surprise her. This rivalry may be due to the power struggle mentioned in Perfect Memento's vampire article, possibly starting with the vampire incident. 
The rivalry is mostly friendly and only Romelia seems to care. As Romelia has no objections to Yukari staying for the party at the end of Silent Sinner or assisting her with investigating in Scarlet Weather. Dialogues and immaterial seems to imply they've already known each other before the game. It is possible they met at the Vampire Incident and that Yukari was the one that signed the contract with Romelia. With the Vampire discussed, let's switch it to the Bookworm, Patchouli. Patchouli Knowledge first met Yukari in her scenario in Immaterial. In Scarlet Weather, Yukari places her in charge of watching the Underground in her victory quote to her. Patchouli later informs and urges her to act about the evil spirits coming out of the Underground in Subterranean's prologue. Yukari finally agrees to act because she can't let them all just do whatever they want again. It is unknown, even to Patchouli, which incident Yukari is referring to. There are many possible ones. Patchouli continues to collaborate with Yukari regarding the underground, as she informs Yukari of the Pelican ship in a Hiso Tensoko victory quote. After the tangent on Yukari's gambit, let's talk about the residents of Aente. Along with Reimu, Yukari confronted Eren and Kaguya to restore the full moon in Imperishable, making Yukari one of the few characters who know they're from the moon. After the incident was resolved and the moon restored, the girls all had a round of moon viewing socket with each other. Unknown to each other, Eren and Yukari's own history actually goes back further than that. As mentioned by Toyohimi at the end of chapter 17 of Silent Sinner, 1000 years ago, Eren set up a trap to catch someone who tried to invade the moon. Yukari was well aware of the trap, apparently having already triggered it before. Assuming her make-believe story in Cajun Lunatic Runegate actually happened, she seems to bear a grudge against the Lunarian Sage, aka Eren, that set it up, referring to her as the much-despised Lunarian Sage. However, Yukari hasn't realized who Eren is. Neither of them make special note of each other in Imperishable and are amicable with each other in the ending. Near the end of Silent Sinner, Yukari remarks to Ran that she's unsure if the Brain of the Moon had actually settled on Earth. Yukari suspects Eren to be a spy for the Moon. The final chapter of Cajun Lunatic reveals that Yukari orchestrated the events primarily to teach Eren to fear the unknown, likely because those who live as humans in Gensokyo are supposed to fear the yokai as stated in Yukari's lecture to Ran earlier about the aliens. Either way, it would be fun to see their reaction if they learned that they were trying to outdo each other this entire time. Let's look at some of Yukari's minor relationship with the cast. Yukari and Rinosuke mostly have business arrangements. In exchange for fuel for his kerosene fan heater, Yukari takes merchandise she likes and occasionally provides information on items. While he is grateful, Rinosuke also doesn't like dealing with her all that much and makes note of how ominous she seems. Although he can't remember it, Yukari once prevented Rinosuke from being spirited away to the outside world. If you ever remember, you owe a favor to Yukari. Another relationship would be the judge, Eiki. When Yukari sends Eiki approaching in Seasonal Dream Vision, she and Yuriko leaves immediately to avoid talking with her. Perfect Memento notes that most long-lived yokai were assisted by Eiki at least once and avoid her due to her lectures. That doesn't sound fun. Another person to talk about would be the puppeteer, Alice. For whatever reason, Alice Margotro is willing to confront Yukari in Immaterial despite otherwise avoiding strong yokai such as Romelia and Yuriko. Yukari's also set up Alice's doll off page to allow for long range communication in Subterranean. Her dialogue towards Yukari in Immaterial shows that they knew each other before then. It seems like everybody knew each other in the past. Like most characters, Alice is still suspicious of Yukari by default. Alice is aware of various yokai rules and arrangement that Yukari is constantly preaching. Yukari also harshly scolds Alice in Alice's second bad ending in Immaterial, much to everyone else's entertainment. With the puppeteer done, let's look at the teacher, Kane. Yukari and Kane Kamishirasawa met and fought at the human village in Imperishable. Kane's ability to hide history has no effect on Yukari, who didn't even know she was using her ability in the first place. It is unexplained why, but history and reality are mentioned regarding Yukari so often that there are many possible reasons. Yukari also disliked Kane for being a human-faced beast. I mean, kinda uncalled for considering Kane was cursed. It's not like she asked for it. 
I think anyway. With Kane discussed, let's switch to the next group, the Three Fairies of Light. Yukari met the Three Fairies of Light in a continuation of Chapter 0 in Eastern and Little Nature Deity, Chapter 5, page 13, asking if she could join in on their prank. They ran away from her. Later in Strange and Bright Nature Deity, Yukari needed to repair a tree that was part of the Great Hawkeye Barrier. She did so by moving the Three Fairies into it, but only after testing them that they were too weak to cause serious trouble. They failed the test with flying colors, so Yukari let them move in. Sunny's ability to reflect some of Yukari's Demaku did impress her a bit. If you can impress Yukari, even just a little bit, that's pretty good, considering what Yukari can bloody do. Fun slash interesting facts. Let's look at some of Yukari's fun slash interesting facts. For some reason, Yukari's appearance in Spellcard 222 in Imperishable is different from other characters. Instead of using her portrait from Imperishable, a modified image from PCB was used. She has blue ribbons instead. What is more strange is that the background used in the spell card, which is also from PCB, uses Yukari's original cut in image with red ribbons, although Shoot the Bullet and Impossible spell cards also uses this. Yukari's sprite in Shoot the Bullet and Impossible also sports blue ribbons. She is the only Phantasm boss in the whole of the Toho project. Her status as 8th boss, however, is matched by Komachi and exceeded by Eiki. Phantasmagoria did have 9 stages. Raymond can also become a stage 8 or 9 boss in Phantasmagoria if playing as Kamachi or Eiki respectively, or a stage 8 boss in Scarlet Weather if playing as Tenshi. In Scarlet Weather, one of Yukari's spell cards spawns a train to mow her opponent down. That's a little bit intense. The graphic of the train is based on an actual existing train, Nagano Electric Railway Kijima Line 3500 series a train used to run in Nagano, Zune's homeland. Regardless, let's hope we don't get smashed by a train in the future. Fanon stuff. We're now into the Fanon, and given Yukari's lengthy profile, expect quite a bit of stuff when it comes to the fandom. Yukari is a common recurring character to appear in the fan base of the series, being very popular amongst the fans of Toho. She may appear in many fan games and art, where despite being a high class boss, compared to Flanche Scarlet, she may have a more lower class appearance to try and fit her better within the fan game. It's common to treat her to have an antagonistic role or a supporting role for Reimu. She also tends to have an arbitrary weakness added to balance her out. You know what's crazy? Hikari's fucking gap has its own bloody section in fandom. Oh boy, let's talk about it. The gaps in fandom are just like how Yukari treats it canonically, with using it as a portal and for sitting on, etc. Except the usage of this is more advantageous. Yukari may use this gap to shoot the Mako at her opponent or use them as an escape route from a particular fight. She'll also use them to spy on other residents for no particular reason and mocking around with various characters. She may also summon various objects from the outside world such as a train or a prohibition sign that will poke out of the gap. The train is a popular meme, where Yukari is sometimes seen riding on the top of a train from the outside world in fan-made videos, likely due to her most powerful spell card in Scarlet Weather in Hiselton Soko, in which it summons a train to run over her opponent. As if it wasn't bloody obvious, getting hit by them would hurt, if not kill you. A thing associated with the gaps are alternate worlds. Although it isn't explicitly stated in canon, the gaps are highly treated as an alternative dimension or another world of some kind with an infinite amount of space, similar to how Senkai is treated canonically. Common nicknames referring to this are Yukari's Gap, The Boundary, and Yukari's Space by Westerners. Super Marissa World is a good example as the world may also show to have normal Earth-like material and have the eyes looking directly at the players. On some cases, along with Toho Mother, various creatures are also shown. On some cases, gaps may be left across Ginsokyo in order for the player to enter this world. It may be treated as a route for the player to cross and get to another part of Ginsokyo. It may also show Yukari sucking a human from the outside world or other characters into this gleamy space. Let's hope you're not that human. Another to talk about is what's behind the gap. It's a real mystery as to what the appearance is on the other side of the gaps. Meaning if you walk around the gaps to look at the behind of it, what do you see? Due to the lining on the illustrations in PCB, fans may believe that the back shows as a wall of some kind, which is rarely shown in artwork. 
There is other theories including that you can do a whole 360 turn on a gap and you can still see the entrance through the gap, meaning it's regardless to what angle you enter it from. Wow, should be experience. Let's look at some of the miscellaneous stuff regarding her gaps. Gaps are useful when certain fanworks would want to create a crossover between the Toho project and another different work, in which Yukari has the capability to go to different fictional and non-fictional universes. Yukari's use to create gaps is interpreted being like the portal gun from the game Portal, of which many illustrations may show bizarre techniques used within portals. This led to many different jokes about misusing the ability in clever ways and or mischievous pranks for her own selfish means. I mean, it has its own pool in Don Burrell, so I know a lot of people like to use it in artwork. Fans tend to draw Yukari and her gaps with Bruna Busilati from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, 20 bucks I just butchered that name, who is able to open gaps, zippers, in the same fashion as Yukari. In some questionable NSFW works, she may use gaps to spy on others when they want a bit of privacy. Trolley Yukari at her finest. Holy shit, we are finally done the freaking gap section. With that done, let's focus on Yukari's relationship with Maribel. Yukari is famously associated with Maribel Hearn by fans due to the related nature of their abilities the ability to manipulate boundaries and the ability to see boundaries, although their exact relationship is never directly stated. When asked about what their relationship was, Zune said a cryptic remark about Lafcadio Hearn, a writer about the past who changed his name to Koizumi Yakumo. This confirms that there is a relationship and is analogous to Lafcadio Hearn, and if directly analogous, Maribel and Yukari may actually be the same person or related but that's up to Zune if that's the case. Despite this, Yukari may be shown to be a motherly figure of some sorts to Maribel, who will on the occasion visit the outside world to see Maribel. There's also trivial videos and artworks representing a nostalgic feeling that Yukari meets her young self, Maribel. Now meeting your past self is definitely trippy if anything. I know fan work goes a little extreme at times, so let's see Yukari's personality. In contrast to her part canon personality, in some fan works, she is sometimes shown as being caring and affectionate towards Ran and Chen, being a strict but motherly figure with Ran and grandmotherly to Chen, from umbrella whacking to a motherly figure. That's quite the change for Yukari. And others, going with the fact that she is familiar with Reimu due to an unsaid event, she is sometimes shown as a mother figure to Reimu, as having cared for her when she was younger in place of her parents. There is a running gag involving her which plays on the fact that she tends to sleep a lot and leaves most of her work to her Shikigami Ran. Due to the fact she sleeps a lot, fans tend to depict her as lazy, which is somewhat true. She did perform her task for a while before she got a Shikigami. And some fans depict her as nocturnal or crepuscular because she is mostly active when it is dark. Due to the fact she sleeps and was sleeping at the time when she encountered Reimu, canonically, some fans interpret her outfit in PCB as a nightgown and she's portrayed in one. Also, she's often drawn without shoes, only socks or stockings. She's often drawn as beautiful and shapely, sometimes impossibly so, and sometimes having a vampish, teasing personality, causing no end of annoyance to Reimu and or Ran. Yukari is no stranger to nicknames, so let's look at them. Popular fan nicknames for Yukari include Tsukima, which is once again Yap, Yukari, a contraction of Yukari-chan, and the mock nickname Baba. It roughly means Old Hag or BBA for short. The last one has been in use because she is known as one of the oldest yokai in Kinsoko. In relation to this, Yukari is also often depicted with Kanako and Eren. This is due to their family names containing the character Ya. That one misread can also mean Old Hag. Don't say that in front of their faces if you know what's good for Ya. Let's look at some other miscellaneous stuff when it comes to Yukari. In some fan works, Yukari insists on being 17 years old. Usage in fan works is possibly a parody of Kikuko Inoue, who claims that she is 17 years old despite being way over that age. Maso Kaku, a summer's daydreams, casts Kikuko Inoue as a narrator, probably Yukari, in a nod to this in joke. I gotta admit, they took the quote to a whole new level. 
This, along with an old hag reputation above, led to Yukari being depicted as easily offended when talking about her age, and comments regarding it are sometimes left unfinished and or with the addition of gapped, as if Yukari herself gapped away the writers to avoid her actual age being revealed or made fun of. Yeah, I ain't going to say shit. Yukari has been compared to and depicted cosplaying as Cheryl Nomi of Macro's Frontier fame, something which also became hilarious in hindsight when Cheryl's voice actress Ayo Endo voiced Yukari in Tovania 2, Stranger's Requiem. Damn! The fans don't hold back when it comes to the voice actors. In fan art, Yukari's fan is sometimes drawn to have Yuriko's fan on her own. She is speculated to be loosely based off of Tsukima Ona, a Japanese urban legend and folktale dating from the Edo period. Pairings! With her fandom part of the way, the only thing left would be the pairings. Reimu and Yukari, or Yuka Reimu. Reimu and Yukari, the border shrine maiden and the yokai of the border, made up the border team of Imperishable. Their relationship in fan works is usually identified by Yukari playfully teasing or flirting with Reimu, as Yukari does poke fun at her a lot in the game, who often acts irritated or impatient with the advances, but may become receptive to them eventually. Just keep annoying her and you'll eventually get her. In PCB, from their conversation, it is possible to infer that Yukari has actually known Reimu previously. In Immaterial, in Reimu's scenario, Reimu says, appears even without invitation, doesn't appear when invited. Afterwards, Yukari threw out the words, oh, have you ever invited me? Enjoying the reaction, nope. At least Reimu was honest there. In the same scenario, in Reimu's conversation with Suika, Reimu said, that's what Yukari said. Thus, when Yukari is present, she has an aforementioned kind of attitude, but when Yukari is not there, she makes a complete change and makes this kind of comment. Thus, from the time of Immaterial, she has obediently believed what Yukari said. In Yukari's scenario, she said, My, you're the first to point that out, Reimu. Whereas everyone else ignored it, hearing only half the story. Reimu here honestly pointed it out. Even when Yukari talks vaguely, Reimu still listens for a bit. This is in sharp contrast to when in Yuyuko's scenario, Yuyuko said good morning, which Reimu ignored and said good evening. Additionally, in Patchouli's scenario, she said, She's always around when I don't want her to be, implying that there are times when she does want her around, especially when Yukari replied, My, I didn't think there would ever be a time when you'd want me around. Afterwards, Patchouli even said, Oh, you lived at the shrine, to which Yukari replied, Lived. This is related to Yukari's lie in Scarlet Weather when she said, My Shrine. In the versus mode, when Reimu wins against Yukari, she says, You always show up the worst times, since you're not around at the worst times, which leaves various impressions. The phrase, Yuka Reimu wa ore no rodo, Yuka Reimu is my lord, is commonly used to declare support for this pairing. I'm getting a deja vu from this. Another pairing would involve her Shikigami, Yukari and Ran, or Yuka Ran. Ran is usually the only one keeping the Yakumo household running because Yukari is asleep most of the time. Next would have to involve her good friend, Yuyuko, Yukari and Yuyuko or Yuka Yuyu. Besides being two of the oldest residents of Ginsokyo, in PCB, Yukari is the one who informs the player that Yuyuko is the one buried under the Saigyo Ayakashi. This led to the popular fan theory that Yukari knew Yuyuko since before her death, and many doujins explored the relationship they had together with quite a few suggesting that Yuyuko committed suicide, causing Yukari to fall into a deep depression. Oh yeah, the people definitely worked with that. The phrase Yuka Yuyu ga ori no Gensokyo, Yuka Yuyu is my Gensokyo, is commonly used to declare support for this pairing. The next will involve a shopkeeper, Renosuke. Yukari and Renosuke are Yukari Rin. In curiosity, Yukari is seen visiting Renosuke's shop, and they have a common interest in artifacts from the outside world. The next is Yukari and Yuka, or Yuka Yuka. That's... clever? Maybe? Both are known for being powerful yokai. That's all I got. The next pairing is Alice. Yukari and Alice are Yuka Ari. There is nothing that connects the two together, aside from the fact that the two are commonly seen as delicate. It is sometimes found along with Rei Mari. The next pairing involves the Celestial, Tenshi, Yukari and Tenshi. Yukari is one of the strongest yokai. 
Tenchi is depicted as a masochist who keeps asking for punishment. You might see where this is going. I post artwork, but YouTube might not like that. But yeah, that was Yukari Yakumo in a nutshell. Holy fuck! That was one of the longest ones yet, if not the longest, which would be impressive considering Yukari isn't a main protagonist. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. For the next profile, I was thinking about choosing between the final bosses. We just did the EX bosses so the final ones couldn't hurt. So in order, we have Romelia, Yuyuko, Suika, Kaguya, Eren, Eiki, Kanako, Tenshi, Oku, Byakuren, Miko, Kokoro, Shimimaru, Sumiriko, and Junko. Yeah, we had quite the cast as compared to the last choices you had. In case you're wondering, I did include the fighters as well since they appeared as the final bosses to multiple characters like Suika, Tenshi, Kokoro, and Sumiriko. Regardless, which parts were your favorite? When you're impressed at what Yukari was truly capable of, do you think Yukari will have more involvement in future games? Or are you going to be careful about calling Yukari an old hag? Like always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and subscribe. Or else Yukari might get me to some random places. Not gonna either be annoying or deadly. Either way, this is Magi and thanks again for watching!